Hey guys, this is Boss. Hey, we just talked really quickly about levels of aggression. And you might be wondering, hey, why are we talking about levels of aggression? What does that matter? Okay, well, it's really going to matter down the road when we start looking at different motivations and how to communicate with coyotes to trigger those. So those level of aggressions are really important. But there's one thing we, we need to add. I just was about ready to head out and I thought, oh man, I didn't talk about something else I wanted to tell you guys about. So when you're thinking about levels of aggression, there's also modifiers to these levels of aggression. All right, so we talked about, I'm gonna go really quickly through this. So basically we talked about pup distress and chi eyes, whimpers, interrogation, barks, challenge barks and howls, okay, and then growls, and then fight sounds. But there are things that modify each level of aggression, okay? So, and not for the first three necessarily. So we're not talking about the chi eyes, and we're not talking about the whimpers and we're not necessarily talking about interrogation though interrogation is important because it'll become part of your series and sound sequences so if you want your coyote to sound the same you want to kind of use if you're using female interrogation howls and it's if you don't want to sound like you've got two coyotes there then you probably want to stay with female barks and female challenge barks and howls and you kind of want to match the tone so how do you modify levels of aggression if, if a bark is a bark well then what would make that more aggressive or less aggressive? Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. The number of coyotes that are in the stand, that are communicating, if they're communicating in an aggressive way, if they've moved down below interrogation, they've moved into barks or challenge barks and howls, etc. Okay, that is more intimidating. Okay, if I'm a single coyote out there, so say I come out of a bar and instead of one guy, I got four guys over there and they start telling me to F off. Okay? That changes the scenario significantly. You know, I have to assess my ability to take on four guys. And I might not be able to see them, right? Because we're just using sound here. But if I can hear them over there cat calling me, then I, I have to make a decision whether I'm going in. And that's going to depend a lot on the coyotes in your area, is how they're going to respond. And we're going to talk about you getting to know the coyotes in your area. And that's through observation using your sounds. But certainly the number of coyotes does change the level of aggression. The more coyotes you have when you move into these more aggressive stances, the more threatening it becomes, okay? So then you also got male versus female, all right? And I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Male sounds, I'm not being chauvinistic or anything, are more aggressive in nature than female sounds, all right? So if you are, calling. You can modify aggression of level by using female challenge barks and howls as opposed to male challenge barks and howls. Now there are some differences there because sometimes you know you always think of that old bar bitch you know the tough one that the guys are even afraid to mess with. Some female coyotes have a have a deeper and gravelly voice especially if they've been around the block a few times and um, and that message that they send out that that sound in their voice can be intimidating to other coyotes and you can hear you will hear some female sounds occasionally that has that deeper tenor to it and it, it has a little gravel to it and that is more intimidating all right higher pitched less gravel less intimidating so that's where we're going to get into tone so the last modifier for levels of aggression is tone so the tone that a person has or that a coyote has means something to us. So if I walk out of a bar and a guy says, Hey buddy, F you. Okay, immediately I've made some decisions about that dude, whether or not I can see him, okay? I've, I've kind of determined his size and his capability, maybe his demeanor and how tough he's going to be as an opponent, right? Immediately, coyotes do the same thing. When a sound comes out, whether it be a challenge bark or a bark, etc., even interrogation howls, they're gathering information about that individual or group of individuals, if you're using group of coyote howls, right, or, or challenge barks. So the thing is, um, a deeper gravelly sound is more threatening than a high-pitched sound. So tone can modify the level of aggression. We have a a challenge bark, okay, so the FU, that deep guy, gravelly, he sounds more threatening than a high-pitched dude. So listen, I'll give you an example. I come out of the bar, a dude says, 
Hey, if you! Okay, uh, I'm gathering some information about him. Now, it may be inaccurate. Maybe I go over there and the guy's like six foot four, 320 pounds, just got out of prison, you know, wearing tats, and I'm, I'm like, oh my God. But the fact is, I've made some decisions based on the sound of his voice. So if he's a high pitched guy, it's a big fella, I'm in trouble, right? But coyotes do the same thing. They make assumptions about what they're going to encounter if they decide to engage, okay? And so if you're confident in your ability to take on your opponent, you're more apt to go in, right? If you're not confident about your ability to take on your opponent, you're not as apt to go in. That's why these levels of aggression and these tones matter, okay? And we're gonna talk about how we can use these tones, we can use these pitches, and you can use that to trigger certain motivations in coyotes. And we will get onto that in the next video. I just wanted to hit this because it is a modifier. It is important for levels of aggression. So we'll tack that on. You guys have a good day. I'm going to see if I can get out and do a stand or two before bed. I hope. And uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Boss.